Born Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, but more commonly known as Leonardo da Vinci, he was born on April 15, 1452 in Tuscany, outside the village of Anchiano in present-day Italy. He was born out of wedlock to respected Florentine notary Ser Piero and a young peasant woman named Caterina. He was raised by his father and his stepmothers. At the age of five, he moved to his father's family estate in nearby Vinci and lived with his uncle and grandparents. Young Leonardo received little formal education beyond basic reading, writing, and mathematics instruction, but his artistic talents were evident from an early age. During this period, Italy and in the 15th century Florence, above all, was the seat of an artistic, humanistic, and technological and scientific flowering known as the Renaissance. Founded primarily on the rediscovery of classical texts and artifacts, Renaissance culture looks to heroic ideals from antiquity and promotes the study of the liberal arts, centering largely upon the individual's intellectual potential. As a result, Tremendous innovations were made in the fields of mathematics, medicine, engineering, architecture, and the visual arts, while the surge of vernacular literature attempts not only to emulate, but also to surpass antique models. Some of the most celebrated figures of Renaissance Italy, supremely exemplified by the artist, scientist, and inventor Leonardo da Vinci, excelled in several fields. By age 14, Leonardo da Vinci was apprenticing under the artist Andrea del Verrocchio in Florence. Verrocchio's specialty was perspective, which artists had only recently begun to get the hang of, and Leonardo quickly mastered its challenges. This style was a way of producing atmospheric expressions in paintings. He remained with Verrocchio until he became an independent master in 1478. Around that time, he took on his first commissioned work, The Adoration of the Magi, for Florence's San Donato, a Scapetto monastery. However, he never finished this work, as he was soon lured to Milan to serve as an engineer, painter, architect, and sculptor for the ruling Sforza dynasty. He worked on a bronze equestrian statue to honor dynasty founder Francesco Sforza off and on for 12 years, but war ultimately interfered and that project never came to fruition. By 1481, Leonardo had outgrown Florence. He approached Lorenzo de' Medici for help. Leonardo early demonstrated formidable talent as a painter and through Lorenzo, he became connected with many influential thinkers and artists. Leonardo referred him to his friend, the Duke of Milan, whose needs were more practical than artistic. This suited Leonardo perfectly as he surpassed the need for just a studio and was desperate to build marvelous inventions. Once in Milan, he couldn't resist a commission that became the most famous fresco in history, the Last Supper. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael are three of the greatest artists in history, but they were also people with ideas and visions that reached far beyond the world of art. They were also bitter rivals, competing for both commissions and fame. Raphael came to Florence in 1504 at the age of 21 and quickly revealed Leonardo's influence in his portraits and Madonnas. Also around 1503, Michelangelo changed from a sculptor of merely grand scale to one whose figures were charged with energy. This may be seen in the contrast between Michelangelo's early David and his later St. Matthew. The Annunciation is the story of Mary being visited by the Archangel Gabriel who explains that she is destined to be the mother of the Son of God, was a popular one in Renaissance times, 
It is considered to be da Vinci's first major work. There are two nearly identical paintings by da Vinci using the title The Virgin of the Rocks. Both paintings depict a rocky setting with the four biblical character, the Madonna, the Christ Child, an infant John the Baptist, and an angel. The subject of the scene is the respect and adoration that John the Baptist gives to the Christ Child. One aspect that makes this painting so great is the complexity and sophistication of the composition. The figures grouped together in a triangular shape are all gesturing towards and looking at each other. This unifies the composition and allows the painting to tell more of a story. It's especially significant because the figures in previous eras' artwork often seem separate from each other. Da Vinci's The Lady with an Ermine is a half-length portrait of Cecilia Gallerani, the mistress of Da Vinci's employer at the time. It depicts her holding an ermine, an animal that could represent a number of things, including purity or pregnancy. It's possibly the greatest example of da Vinci's ability to add layers of meaning into a painting. In fact, some historians have argued this portrait is superior to the Mona Lisa, believing the subject to be much more captivating and beautiful. Ginevra de Benici was a 17-year-old Florentine intellectual, and it is theorized that da Vinci was commissioned to paint her to commemorate her engagement to Luigi Nicolini. This piece is especially interesting because unlike da Vinci's other portraits of women, she appears to be indifferent or unhappy. One popular interpretation is that Ginevra was unhappy about the approaching marriage. In support of this theory is the juniper sprig painted on the portrait's reverse side, a symbol in the Middle Ages of sorrow and pain. St. John the Baptist was painted by Leonardo da Vinci during 1513 to 1516, when the High Renaissance was metamorphosing into mannerism. The pointing gesture of St. John toward the heavens suggests the importance of salvation through baptism that John the Baptist represents. It is believed to be his last painting. This is an oil painting on walnut wood. It is now exhibited at the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. The Virgin and Child with St. Anne was painted by Leonardo da Vinci in 1510. This painting depicted St. Anne her daughter, the Virgin Mary, and the infant Jesus Christ is shown grappling with the sacrificial lamb symbolizing his passion, whilst the Virgin tries to restrain him. The painting was commissioned as the high altarpiece for the Church of Santissima Annunziata in Florence. The Last Supper was painted during his time in Milan from about 1495 to 1498 a tempera and oil mural on plaster. The Last Supper was created for the refectory of the city's monastery of Santa Maria della Grazi, also known as the Senegal. This work measures about 15 by 29 feet and is Leonardo da Vinci's only surviving fresco. It depicts the Passover dinner during which Jesus Christ addresses the apostles and says, one of you shall betray me. One of the painting's stellar features is each apostle's distinct emotive expression and body language. Its composition in which Jesus Christ is centered among yet isolated from the apostles has influenced generations of painters. Leonardo is successful in conveying their feelings of horror, anger, and shock and he displays very human emotions. Although a common subject in art at the time, Leonardo's painting was the first to illustrate real people acting as such. 
Another notable aspect of the Last Supper is its technical perspective. Every element of the image draws the viewer's attention to the foreground and Christ's head. The window directly behind him acts as a halo, and Judas is the only figure who leans away from Christ and is painted in shadow. Some say that this is the greatest example of one-point perspective ever created. Leonardo was clever in his use of perspective because he allowed the observer to see the tabletop, even though it shouldn't be possible. Furthermore, there are a number of people crowded round the table and not enough seats. Leonardo's Vitruvian Man is called that way because Leonardo was working over the writings of a Roman architect named Marcos Vitruvius. The Vitruvian Man is a world-renowned drawing. The image exemplifies the blend of art and science during the Renaissance and provides the perfect example of Leonardo's keen interest in proportion. In addition, this picture represents a cornerstone of Leonardo's attempts to relate man to nature. It is accompanied by notes based on the work of Vitruvius. The drawing, which is in pen and ink on paper, depicts a nude male figure in two superimposed positions with his arms and legs apart and simultaneously inscribed in a circle and square. The drawing and text are sometimes called the canon of proportions, or less often, proportions of man. The Mona Lisa is also known as Portrait of Lisa Gerardini, wife of Francesco del Giocondo, or La Gioconda, and as well as being one of Leonardo da Vinci's favorite paintings, it remains the most famous artwork in the world. The artist carried the Mona Lisa with him until he died and was clearly aware of its significance. After the painting was produced, there were questions raised about the identity of the sitter. While most people agreed that it was Mona Lisa Gerardini, the wife of Francesco del Giocondo, a Florentine silk merchant, a lot of people proposed it was, in fact, a self-portrait and the facial features resemble a later self-portrait by Leonardo. It's possible that his work was commissioned to mark one of two events, the purchase of a house in 1503 or the birth of Gerardini's family's second son in 1502 after the death of their daughter three years earlier. The fine dark veil that covers Mona Lisa's hair is often believed to be a mourning veil, a piece of clothing worn to symbolize social status. Yet the subject's clothing is rather simple and ordinary, and neither her gown nor the scarf around her neck indicates her aristocratic standing. In 1911, the Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre Museum in Paris by a former employee who believed it belonged in Italy. The thief hid the painting underneath his painter's smock and left the museum. He had the painting for two years until he was seized by police and the work was safely returned to his original home. The son of Lombard aristocrat, Count Francesco Melzi, was inducted into Leonardo's household in 1506 and is thought to have been his favorite pupil. He traveled to France with Leonardo and stayed with him until his master's death, after which Melzi was left his artistic and scientific works, manuscripts and collections, and dutifully managed the estate. Gian Giacomo Caprodi de Areno, better known as Salai, was an Italian artist and lover of Leonardo da Vinci from 1490 to 1518. Salai entered Leonardo's household at the age of 10. He created paintings under the name of Andrea Salai. He was described as one of Leonardo's students and lifelong servant and is thought by some to be the model for Leonardo's St. John the Baptist and Bacchus. Francesco Di Giorgio Martini was a Sienese artist. He worked in the courts of Naples and Milan where he became strongly influenced by Leonardo da Vinci. He was an architect, painter, sculptor, 
and military theoretician at a time when Sienese artists were little known outside their native city. He worked at courts in Urbino, Naples, and Milan, where he met Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a true Renaissance man. He is well known as a great artist, but in fact, he made great contributions to the foundation of science. He used science to enhance his paintings and was right away intrigued. Da Vinci did not see a divide between science and art. He viewed the two as intertwined disciplines rather than separate ones. He believed studying science made him a better artist. He was also the first scientist that correlated mathematics and science. Leonardo was also a skilled inventor and engineer. He envisioned hydraulic pumps, flying machines, and even war machines. Leonardo is credited for designing the first war tank, an early helicopter, and even an early bicycle. Although da Vinci is known for his artistic abilities, fewer than two dozen paintings attributed to him exist. Da Vinci died at Cloaks in 1519 at age 67. He was buried nearby in the palace church of St. Florentine. The French Revolution nearly obliterated the church, and its remains were completely demolished in the early 1800s making it impossible to identify da Vinci's exact gravesite. I chose to do my video on Leonardo da Vinci for the reason that from my perspective he was a genius as an artist and inventor and he continues to inspire artists and scientists alike centuries after his death. 